going to be our lesson on transformations of functions. We're going to start with uh, shifting, you know, translating them uh, vertically, horizontally, and then doing some uh, reflections, and then finally finishing with some um, vertical stretches and compressions. So again, hopefully you'll kind of remember some of the stuff. And if you are having some trouble, I would say if you want to have your toolkit uh, functions out. That's that last page of the first unit. That might be helpful when we do some of these. Okay, so we'll start with vertical shifts. All right, so vertical shifts, obviously you're sliding the function up or down. Uh, we've always in um, the algebra days talked about taking our function and adding or subtracting a constant. And that letter we've used for the constant is letter K. So in this figure here, uh, you'll notice we have the cube root of X function. It says it right here. We have the cube root of x function. And when we're doing our vertical shift by moving it up one unit, I'll rename this as a new function of g of x, where you take your original cube root of x function and you add one. And you'll notice that um, that's pretty much as straightforward as it can get. When I move up, I, I use addition. When I move down, I use subtraction. All right, so we can also take uh, an example like this, where it's looking at uh, this graph talking about the, uh, the temperature in a greenhouse building. Airflow vents near the roof open and close throughout the day. This figure shows the area of open vents, V, and square feet throughout the day in the hours after midnight. During the summer, the facilities manager decides to try to better regulate temperature by increasing the amount of vents by 20 square feet throughout the day and night. So I'm going to sketch a new graph, so I'll use a different color, where I'm taking my original function, so my original V of T, and I'm going to be shifting it up 20 units. Okay, so I'm going to take 0, 0, and that becomes 0, 20. Same thing with 4 and 8. When I look up here, I've got 9 or 12, any of these. These are all going to go up 20 as well. And then finally, down here, also going to go up 20 until the end. All right, so this in red would be my new function for the summertime. All right, so that's how we vertically shift. And so I'll show you how to do it in a table. So in a table here, all right, it's asking us to vertically shift these uh, ordered pairs by going down three units, right? Minus three is going down. All right, so again, we're only changing the y values here. So my ordered pair for my new function, which will say g of x, my order pairs are still going to have the same x values. All right, we're still going to have 2, 4, 6, and 8 for our x values. But now our y values are being moved 3 units down. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Uh, 3 minus 3 is 0. 7 minus 3 is 4. And finally, 11 minus 3 is 8. So that would be our new ordered pairs for this g of x function. In letter B, we're taking this quadratic function, which you've looked at in your algebra two days, uh, which shows you the, and if you've taken physics uh, your junior year, also you would have seen this, talking about the uh, function giving the height of a ball in meters thrown upward from the ground after t seconds. So they're saying instead of throwing it from the ground, right, so h of t, which is negative 4.9 times t squared, plus 30t plus zero meters, right? That's our constant is where our, where is the ball uh, being lifted from, in this case on the ground. Now they're saying they're gonna throw it from the top of a 10 meter building. So this new function b of t, nothing is really gonna change except for that constant. Now I'm gonna write plus 10 because we're now on a 10 meter building as we throw the ball. Okay, that's it for uh, vertical shifts. Let's talk about horizontal. The key thing with horizontal shifts, and I've said this uh, ever since I started teaching high school math, is that when you're trying to think about shifting to the left or to the right, you must think opposite. And this can be the trickiest thing uh, when you're talking about this. And it all stems from this idea that you're looking at inside the function, right? Inside the parentheses, we'll, we'll do inside the absolute value, inside the square root symbol. So whatever your function is, when you're looking inside that shift, you need to think opposite, all right? And because it says x minus h, when your h is to the left, that's a negative number. When you do subtracting of negative, it turns it into addition. 
Same thing if you were to move to the right. X minus a positive number is going to be subtraction. So it looks kind of funky, but make sure you always think opposite. So that's, I cannot stress that enough to think opposite. Okay, so let's look at this same um, V of T function we did before with the uh, vents and regulating the temperature. So now we're deciding to move this horizontally two hours earlier. All right, so the idea is we're going to have V of and then T, it's going to be two hours earlier. So I'm going to write T minus, and two hours earlier would be negative two. But as I mentioned before, we don't write minus a negative, we change it to addition. So I'm going to be moving this two units to the left. So I'll use green for this. So two units to the left for all of these. So this is going to be over here now. Again, now the height will be the same, right? Not changing it vertically, but we're just changing um, our horizontal shift. So that's going to be to 15, then down, and we're stopping at 22. Okay, so that's our new function when it's being shifted two hours earlier. All right, do the same thing with the table. The idea here is that you're moving two units, or sorry, excuse me, three units to the right. Right, this shift here is three units to the right. So our new table for uh, our g of x function all right, is going to be 5, 1, 7, 3, 9, 7, and 11, 11. The idea being that each of these x values, you added three units because we're moving to the right. Okay. All right, let's do it graphically. This is our parent function for the quadratic, f of x equals x squared. And let me actually rephrase that. That is not. This is the parent function. So, oops, excuse me. 0, 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared, negative 1. I'll show you. This is the basic one. All right, so there's our basic function for the quadratic. And you notice that we're moving this, it looks like two units to the right. So our vertex at zero, zero has shifted to two comma zero. So that means this is gonna be two units right. All right, so how we would do this is our g of x function would be taking that f of x function and doing x minus two. So when we do that for our g of x, we're going to do x minus 2 squared. Some students will want to expand on that. You can if you want. Just make sure you don't expand incorrectly. That's a very common mistake here. I'm just going to leave it. Something you talked about in your algebra days. Um, that is just uh, in vertex form. If you wanted to expand it to standard form, feel free. But it's completely not necessary. So just make sure, like, no need to do extra work. Just going to bring in opportunities for mistakes. Okay, this next one. It says graph the parent square root function. So let's graph that right now. So the square root of 0 is 0, 1, square root of 4 is 2. Here's our parent function for the square root. All right. Then it says we want to transform it by doing f of x plus 2. You notice it's inside the parentheses, so I'm thinking horizontal shift here. Thinking opposite, the opposite of a positive 2 is a negative 2, so I'm thinking my new one is going to be 2 units to the left. All right, so two units to the left. So I take each of these and move them two units to the left. Okay, and so this is what our new function would look like. Okay, now is this a horizontal or vertical shift? We said it was horizontal because it's inside the parentheses. And which way is the graph shifted? It's shifted two units to the left. By how many units? It is two units. So all of that checks out there. All right, now doing both at the same time. All right, so let's try this example of the absolute fun value function, right? That's my V for victory. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. You get the idea here. Same thing over here, making our V. And this is called the parent absolute value function. All right, and it wants us to do f of x minus 2, so that's my horizontal shift inside the parentheses. All right, and then plus 4 is going to be my vertical shift. So I'm thinking two units, change colors here. Let's go red. So two units, 
And I'm going to look at thinking the opposite of a minus 2 is a positive 2. So that's 2 units to the right. And the plus 4 is 4 units up. All right, so to take each of these points and move them, two units to the right and four units up. So two units to the right, one, two, three, four units up. All right, now we're kind of off the grid here, but I think you can get the idea if I were to make more of a V. And you might be thinking, oh, the size has changed. It really hasn't, right? You haven't changed the size of the V. I just stopped drawing because I don't want to draw over more words. But the idea is you don't change the size, you're just changing the location of the V. Okay, let's try to write a formula based on the toolkit function here. This is the parent square root function. So if I were to do the parent square root function like I did earlier, it would look like this. All right, so that would be f of x is the square root of x. But you'll notice we're shifting it. All right, so if I move, my vertex has moved one unit to the right and two units up. So one unit right and two units up. So when I write this, h of x, right? remember inside the parentheses, in this case it's not parentheses, inside the square root symbol is gonna be that horizontal shift, that right, I gotta think opposite. So x minus one would be one unit to the right. And then outside, I'm going up plus two because I'm going up two units. So this would be my new function, h of x. Probably should use blue since it matches that one, my bad. Okay, let's try one more here before we get into some reflections. This says we have the parent function for the reciprocal one over x. We wanna move this one, okay? We wanna move this one unit to the right. So that's gonna be inside the parentheses where I think is with the x one unit to the right. So that x minus one at the bottom. And then outside, so past your uh, fraction symbol, is one unit up, so plus one. This one can be a little tricky, so just kind of commit to memory that if you're dealing with the parent reciprocal function, that when you are dealing with a horizontal shift, you're thinking underneath the radical, excuse me, underneath the fraction bar. And if you're doing a vertical shift, you're thinking outside of it. All right, let's go into reflections. All right, now reflections, all right, when we think about these, it can be a little bit trickier, but a vertical reflection, reflects a graph vertically across the x-axis. And that can be a little confusing with that one. While well, horizontal reflection reflects a graph horizontally across the y-axis, okay? So I always just think like vertical reflection in, you think vertical, um, you're thinking actually is a y value, but in terms of changing the values, we need to be thinking about the over the x-axis because we're actually, when we do that, we're changing the y values. So that's why it's a little confusing. Um, is because it's based on what's changing in the ordered pairs. So sometimes it might help just to change the ordered pairs, then you'll see, I think, what happens. All right, so let's try to do this one here, this parent radical function. So again, vertically, right, so when letter A here is going to be over the x-axis, right, because the y values are becoming the opposite. And horizontally is over the y-axis, because the x values are becoming the opposite. So when I do this one, all right, over the x-axis is gonna go down this way. And then when I do over the y-axis, it's going to reflect this way. All right, and as you get more comfortable with that, I think it'll be a little simpler. Okay, let's try to do it with a table. All right, so with the table, as I said earlier, it's all about uh, when you're doing this, you're doing the opposite of either of the y's or the x's. So in this first one, letter A, for g of x, all right, it says the opposite of the entire function. So that's opposite of the y values. So your x's are going to stay the same, but your y values will be different. So they'll become the opposite. In this case, they're all positive, so they all become negatives. Just be clear, it doesn't mean they're always going to be like that. If it were a negative, it would become a positive. And for B, which is H of X, that's where the X's are becoming the opposite. So that's going to be 2, 5. 0 can become the opposite, so that stays the same. Negative 2, 15. And negative 4, positive 20. So I think that will probably be the best way to think about it. 
All right, now these next two um, slides are showing you kind of how to find whether two functions are even or odd. And just a, a reminder about what that means. If a function is even, all right, an even function means that it has y-axis symmetry. Okay, so if you have a function that you're looking at it and it's symmetrical about the y-axis, that is called an even function. If you're looking at a function and it's an odd function, that means it has origin symmetry. So that means you're like, if you're in the first quadrant, it's gonna reflect over to the third quadrant. I'll get into that more as we talk about this, uh, but I always tell students is the most basic even function is x squared, right? That two is an even number, which is a parabola. And the most basic odd function is x cubed, which is your cubic function, which looks like that letter s. All right. Now, the way that I have always taught it is to think of it like this, is that if you have your function and it's equal to, so my original function is equal to f of the opposite of x, me, then this means the function is even. And then if you take what you just found, and if that's equal to the opposite of the entire function, then that's odd. And that's kind of how I would practice these examples. So let me show you. So you have, I'm going to first do checking to see if f of x is equal to f of the opposite of x. So let's do the f of the opposite of x. So I get the opposite of x cubed plus 2 times negative x. So when I do that, I get negative x cubed minus 2x. So check for a moment. Are these the same? So I'll highlight them. Is the original function equal to what I got for f of negative x? The answer is no. Right? It's not, so it is not going to be even. Let's see if it's odd. This is where I do the opposite of the original. That's important to make sure you do the opposite of the original. x cubed plus 2x, which would be negative x cubed minus 2x. So now you're comparing, and it's going to come up with a different shade, but this green right, with this turquoise, I guess I'll make it simpler and just use green on that one. There we go. I'll put that back. Don't worry. So you compare the green ones. All right. And are those the same? The answer is yes. So that means this function is going to be odd. Let's do the same thing with letter B. So I'm going to do F of the opposite of S, which is negative S to the fourth power plus three times negative S squared plus seven. All right. When you take something to the fourth power, it's just going to make it S to the positive fourth power plus three times s squared plus seven. And look at that, that's exactly the same as my original function, f of s. Because those are the same, this is what we call an even function. So that's how to do it algebraically. Okay, our last thing. All right, we're gonna do some stretches and compressions in the vertical direction, okay? So this is where uh, it can get a little tricky because um, you're putting numbers in front of the uh, entire function. So if the constant that we're putting in front of it is greater than one, then what we get is called a vertical stretch. All right, and I'll show you in class the way I used to always think of it. Like if you take um, a string and go right through the top of my head and pull it on that to make me thinner, that would be called a vertical stretch. If the constant is between zero and one, all right? And again, I wanna make sure you understand when I'm talking about that constant, I'm ignoring any negatives, right? That negative in front would make it a reflection. So we get, it's called a vertical compression. All right, so this figure kind of helps show you, I know mine isn't color, yours might not be, but if you look at the original, that's like kind of navy blue, that's the original f of x bell curve. Then if you were to take that and multiply by two, right, that number is between, or excuse me, greater than one. So you're stretching it up, right, making it thinner. And then if you were to take the original f of x function and multiply it by 0 0.5, which is between zero and one, that's going to compress it, so smash it down a little bit. All right, so that's how I kind of think of it. All right, let's look at this one right here. So we've got this population uh, of fruit flies modeled here. And the scientist is comparing it to another one, Q, but it's twice as large. So my Q1, which I'll use green, so this is uh, Q of T, is going to be 2 times P of T. So 0, 1 becomes 0, 2. 3, 3 becomes 3, 6. 
six two becomes six four. You get the idea. But seven zero, this is an interesting one. Seven zero actually stays seven zero because the y value is zero and times two would stay zero. So this is how it's going to look for a vertical stretch. All right, that's it for the new population. All right, let's try with the table. So we're saying in this table, our new function g of x is going to be 3 fourths times f of x. So again, your x values are going to be the same here. All right, x values are still going to be the same. That's still going to be 2. But our y value of 12 needs to multiply by 3 fourths. And when you do that, you get 9. Same thing here. 4 stays the same, but 16 times 3 fourths is 12. 20 times 3 fourths is 15. And 0 times 3 fourths stays 0. All right. Our last bit here, and then we'll be done. We want to write a formula for a function that we get when we stretch the identity toolkit function by a factor of 3, then shift it down 2 units. So my new function, g of x, and you can use whatever letter you want, g of x is going to take that identity toolkit function, which I'll call f of x, multiply it by 3 because it's a vertical uh, stretch, not a compression, right? If it was compression, it would be a little different. And then I'm going to shift it down 2 units. So I'm going to do minus 2 out at, after the function. If it was a horizontal shift, so left or right, that would be going inside the parentheses. All right? So that's it for our transformations. Good luck on the practice.